Thank you. I'd like to call the order on the meeting of the Finance Committee. Representing the committee, we myself as the chair, Council Gould, Council Manning Martin, Council McGinn, and Council Turco. All other councilors are uh, welcome to participate. First item on the agenda, item A, is a transfer of funds from the CPC administrative account. Um, Mr. Gingrich. Thank you. Uh, this $10,000 is the annual allotment that, that uh, we set aside for the budget of cost of running the CPC program. Do any members have any questions? Uh, Council again. No questions. I'm prepared to make a motion. You go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, move to approve the transfer from account number 270-0000330011. Uh, Community Preservation Act unreserved fund balance in the amount of $10,000 to account number 270-0000-33024. Community Preservation Act administration in the same amount of $10,000, so moved. You've heard the, uh, the, you've heard the motion by Council McGinn. Any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Item B deals with the transfer of funds. Councilor, I mean, Mr. Gingrich. I see I promoted you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is an annual statutory transfer that we do to establish funding in uh, the various open space historic preservation and housing accounts as approved by the CPC. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, in the interest of time, um, I would, and I would imagine you'd read this in full at the full meeting. I'd dispense with the reading and make the motion to uh, approve the various transfers as uh, stipulated in the communication dated September 21st, 2018 uh, from his honor, the mayor. Uh, so moved. Thank you, Council again. Uh, Council Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so B is just the transfer of funds. It's not the, um, one moment, please. It's not the Gideon Foster. That's in C, right? It's not, okay. Um, and could I ask, uh, Mr. Gingrich, I see the city collections are 837,000, and then the state match it was 139,000. So, the Community Preservation Act we've had in the city of Peabody now, would it come about in 2000? It's about 18 years ago, 18, 20 years ago. And at that time, it was 100% state match. Is that correct? Yeah, it was either 100% or 50%. I don't remember. But it was quite, quite a significant amount. Right. I believe it was 100%. And we were, the city was smart enough to get a jump on that in the early stages. I remember my friend Judy Selesnick working hard to educate the, the um, residents and the voters to support that act. And I support, supported that act then, and I continue to support uh, the use of it. And so the city of Peabody was good to get in. It's good for us to get in early when the state was matching it at 100%. But the math now, it looks like the state match, what's 139,000? Is that 20%? I think it's a little less. Sorry? I think it's a little less than 20, actually. So now this, the CPA matching is less than 20%. So it's not, back in the day it was 100%, now it's down to 20%. So most of the monies then that are in the CPA funds are predominantly property taxes from, from our residents, right? With a 20, less than 20% yeah, match. Yeah, right. Okay, I just wanted to get up to speed on that. So yep. most of the money that's been in there and continues to go in there is more and more Peabody property to, from yeah. property taxes. Okay, thank you. And <clears throat> and also on the request for transfer from community preservation funds, I see you're identifying uh, funds to go into historical preservation reserve, community housing reserve, and open space reserve. When you say community housing reserve, is that affordable housing? It is the... Um Anything related to housing, um, I, I think the CPC has a, a little bit of a leeway, but it's not, it's not affordable per se. <clears throat> okay, I thought 
CPA money was for rec op open space and, and recreation, affordable housing, and preservation, isn't it? For, any, those four things, those correct? Those three things, three things. Three things. things. So, so then, yes, community housing, that is affordable housing. You're capturing it. Because when I look at this, I don't see anything identified for affordable housing. So it's captured under your community housing reserve. Is that correct? I, th I think for the most part. I, there might be uh, other use, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Councilman again. Thank you. Um, through you to Councilman Manning Martin, the answer is yes. That is, that is the affordable housing bucket. Okay, and what else is in the bucket? That's affordable, it. Affordable, that, it's all affordable it's, housing, it's isn't the, it? Yeah, that's it, I mean. That's it's, it, it's just affordable they're, housing. They're, correct. Okay, and, thank and you. The, the community housing, affordable housing, they're synonymous. Okay, it's just kind of a misnomer since it, it's in, okay. It's, yeah. so we might want to look at that. And Semantics. Then it's a clear thing, yeah. I, I, think clear that, thing. I, think, I think that the uh, legislation specifically references community housing, but that but the restriction on that money is for affordable. Affordable, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, if there's no further questions, I'll entertain uh, the motion. Okay, there's no further questions. We're gonna dispense with, uh, Council McGinn's uh, motion was to dispense with the reading and accept the transfers as presented in item B on the agenda from Ms. Honor the Mayor. On the motion, any comments? Seeing none, roll call. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Last item on the agenda, item C is transfer of funds. Council, uh, Mr. Gingrich. Uh, this first item is the transfer for 230,109 for the repairs and restoration of the Gideon Foster House. You wanna take these individually? Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on the Gideon Foster House transfer request? Council Manning Martin. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone here from um, historical preservation or just you? Just me. Just you, okay. So I'm hoping you can answer these questions. Um, in the application, which is extremely um, thorough on requesting these monies, it's a, it's a very thorough application and, and it's a good one. And in the application, um, there's mention of the windows. And could you tell me who compiled the document? Um, give me one second, please. It's David Hart, AIA. He, do you know what AIA stands for? In Ar architect. That's an architect. Is he a historical architect, AIA, anyone? AIA, yeah. Is it, his, is it historical? What are his credentials? I don't expect you to know that. These are questions that I had. That's I, the Ar Architect Architectural Institute of America, I believe. That's the, the, just the designation of the Okay, and it's unfortunate that no one's here to, to answer these questions because I kind of poured over this um, request. And, you know, I know this isn't your area expertise, but you're up here to request the funds. So um, I guess my issue is, is there's a document in here from this architect, and he, um, clarifies, so he doesn't clarify, he says that if the building, uh, could, sh if the evidence can be found that the early windows were in fact six by six, at first I thought they were, that meant six by six, like, feet and then I realized it's panes because I looked at the pictures that are provided and, and they're not six by six, they're two by two. So they're two by two panes. So it says if, if evidence can be found that early windows were in fact six by six, new windows should be installed to fit the federal style architecture and, st and storm windows with exterior and interior should be installed. So I didn't see any 
proof that there is no evidence submitted in this application that there were six by six original windows because the windows that are in there now are not the original windows but they were um, replaced a long time ago. Who knows, 100 years ago, I don't know. But they're two by two. So there is no proof that they were original six by six windows. And the reason why that's an issue is because the cost of the six by six windows is 50% of this request. And the Peabody Historical Society said that they could replace the existing windows for a total of $27,000 as opposed to $114,000. But because this David Hart IA, AIA uh, kind of hypothesizes that there might have been these different windows in there that were six by six. And if you could come up with proof with that, they should be replaced for a, a, an exorbitant amount of money more than the two by twos. And a couple things is there's no proof that there was a six by six, that they were six by six, yet we're, the, what is being requested anyway is 114,000 as opposed to 27,000. And also, we're talking about a public building and public funds, and this is all taxpayers' money out of the CPA money, which you know we've already established earlier is dwindling with the state match. It used to be 100%, now it's less than 20%. So I don't know who this gentleman is, and I'm sure he does fine work, but did he write this um, estimate and recommendation as if it were like, a, an unlimited pool of money. If you, if you could do whatever you wanted to bring this up to what you think it looked like back in its original state, what would you do? And that's how I'm reading this, because there is no proof that it was six by six. They've already been replaced, they're not the original windows, uh, and it's, it's a difference of $87,000 for replacement. So, to me, um, I mean, if, you're, if you had a historical house yourself and you had unlimited funds and your wish was to, repl to repair the house in its original state and you had your own money and your own uh, funds and your own wish to do that to your house, then that would be up to you to, to do that. Um, but in this instance, it's a public house with public funds and it's like a hypothetical that, well, Back in the day, they would have had this type of window, so replace it with that type of window. And given that, um, you know, we don't get the matching funds anymore uh, to the extent we used to, and um, and as I'm sure many of you know, and the mayor uh, would be announcing it in more detail, is that the Crown and Shield sale. There was good news today that the wind. Uh, company did match it and the city is uh, match the sales so we'll be able to uh, keep the affordable units but the city is also going to have to help with these type of monies with community preservation and CPC money uh, so that eighty seven thousand dollars I would prefer not be spent on windows that may it could have been there uh, that had been replaced a long time ago for the you know difference of eighty seven thousand dollars because we are going to have to come up with a substantial amount of money. I think the mayor said maybe one point six from these particular funds, one point six million. So when you get down to decisions like that, eighty seven thousand dollars is a lot of money. So um, I, I can't support replacing those windows at that cost when we have no proof that they were the, uh, the original windows of that building because it hasn't been provided and all the pictures that have been provided, they've been two by twos and it's already been replaced and they're not original windows. And I know you can't answer or address that because you're here to ask just simply for a transfer of funds. So I wish someone from, uh, from historical society uh, could answer those questions. So that's my concern. It's a lot of money for windows that, you know, might have been there, but we have no idea. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Manny Martin. Good point. Councilor Turco, then Council Gold. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to Council Manning, I, I, I thoroughly agree that uh, somebody from Historical should have been here, but just um, from my vantage point, I just wanted to let you know that there were three city councilors there, myself, Council McGinn, and Council Gould. Um, I, be I believe it. In, in, in Council McGinn, I'll let you answer your own question. If it was you that raised this question during the CPC meeting, um, I think it was the exact question. And uh, Mayor Bonfanti was the one who presented um, the project, and he spoke very passionately of it. And I believe he addressed uh, Council McGinn's question um, to the fact that they would be uh, brought back to the six by six panes uh, that they um, have determined were the original windows in the Gideon Foster House. But on that, I'll defer to Council McGinn, if you don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, uh, Councilor Turco is correct to an extent. The nature of my question was at the um, CPC meeting was whether or not they were double counting um, and somehow and somehow inflating, uh, you know, inadvertently inflating the number. Um, and I was assured that they were not, and I validated that after the fact. So I I, I was comfortable with the uh, uh, with the number. Uh, and Councilor Turco is correct. They were they were fairly uh, adamant that um, that this uh, proposal would would uh, return the building to uh, its uh, historically accurate uh, configuration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, but there's no proof of that, right? They just, it, in, the, in the application, it just says that um, the, that basically that they, the Peabody Historical Society could replace the existing windows for a total of $27,000, but the Historical Society is requesting the full amount instead for $114,000. Uh, to replace the windows to be as historically accurate as possible, but there's no, there is no proof that there was six by six. They just want it, they, they just know that, well, those were the type of windows, this is what I'm getting from the application, yeah. I, did work, I did read it thoroughly, is they, they know that six by six windows were used back then, um, so they want to put it back to that, and I just, They've already been replaced, the two by twos. Um, and I, I understand it's, I think that the work that the Historical Society has been phenomenal. And again, I, I am a big supporter of the CPA funds be, being used in the manner that they have for the past you know, 10 years that I've been the council. I think I've only disagreed once with uh, the use of funds what, that's been recommended uh, for expenditure. It, to me, it's just you, you want it to go back to its original state, and even the the um, the assessor here says if proof can be uh, submitted, then like a hypothetical, and there's just no proof. And again, it's eighty-seven thousand dollars. So I understand they want it to go back to what they think it was and what they want it to look like, but that's kind of not enough for me for to for such an expenditure. So that's my point. There's just no proof here. They, they want it to go back to that, and they haven't provided any proof that they were there, and they already replacement windows. Thank you. Council again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think there was a question um, on the front end of your commentary to me about proof, and I, I was simply recanting the, the, the question that I had asked and the response I got. I did not ask for proof at the meeting. Um, so I can't say whether yeah. there's proof or there isn't proof. I didn't request any proof. Right. So. Right. Thank and, you. And I understood you, that. Chairman. I understood you were correcting Councilor Turco. I, I understood that. Um, so I'm just getting back to the application that's in front of us. Um, there, it, it's asked for proof, and then none was submitted. And so I don't believe that, that there is any proof that they were ever six by six. Thank you. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, in the sake of transparency, and there's a lot of money we're talking about here, that we should continue this until the next Finance Committee meeting and ask the architect and someone from the Historical Society to come here, talk it out, and let us know exactly what the expenditure is going towards. We, it's too much money to, to have it up in the air. So if that's okay, Mr. 
Chairman, I'll make a motion on that or a discussion on that or? So your motion would be to um, continue to move this uh, item, this transfer request to the uh, next finance committee meeting and to request the Historical Society to have a representative here and to provide proof that the uh, windows were originally six by six. And the architect too, please, because he, was, he, he well. was very thorough and detailed, but I think the body, our body deserves to hear it from him in that regard, so moved. You've heard the motion by Council Gould. Any questions on the motion? All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Next item on this. Thank you. Um, the next item is a chance for 32,314.82 for repair to the center school playground. There's some uh, deterioration uh, in the play area in the back. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Gindrich. Um, we have Jackie Ofanos, the principal of the center school here tonight to talk about um, the need for a new playground. It, the center school, I believe, was one of the only school's playgrounds that wasn't redone with CPC money. Um, so if it's okay, Mr. Chairman, I'd like the principal to come up and talk for one minute. It, let, let me ask you this only for the interest sure. of time, because I want to make sure you know, people do come here at 7.30, and yep. again, it's yep. we're past our time. Uh, I would allow that if there are any questions pertaining to the transfer, but if the transfer is just going to flow. That's a good point. I agree. Thank you. Any, any member have any questions on the transfer itself? Yes. What are you transferring? The transfer is $32,000, $32,314.82 from the uh, open space to um, the center school playground upgrades. So this is just the playground? This is, this is just the playground piece. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't see any uh, questions. Council Gould, you want to make the motion to allow the transfer? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to transfer from uh, account 270000033021 in the amount of $32,314.81 from Community Preservation Act Open Space 2 Account number 270-01811-58562-2019-0379 in the same amount, $32,314.82, Community Preservation Act, the uh, center school playground upgrade. So moved, Mr. Chairman. You've heard the motion by Council Gould. Any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, uh, Mr. Gingrich, the third request. The final request is 124,922.03 from open space to the Independence Greenway Phase 2 to bring the bikeway extension up to the 25% design phase. Uh, Mr. Callahan's here if anyone has any questions. Councils, any questions for either Mr. Gingrich or any questions at all? Council Just anybody? out of curiosity, where exactly on Endicott Street does it come out? The the picture that we were provided is, is kind of grayed and blacked out, so I couldn't figure it out. The, the, uh, the terminus of the, the bike path would be uh, basically at the Endicott Street Bridge, um, uh, down, I guess, um, it's in line with the, the abandoned railroad corridor that the city purchased a few years ago. So it would come out, I think there's a parking lot. Is, to, it, the, is it the Farnham Park? parking lot or is it more towards the uh, the Polish club so I'm not familiar with either one of those locations you did see that you said the bridge right on Endicott Street 
Yes. So um, the old former PMLP building, 70 that, Endicott Street. Okay, you're talking where the water runs under. Okay, yes. there's another bridge it, it, on Endicott Street. You're not referencing that. Okay. Yeah. It, that makes it, sense. It, it essentially is parallel to the Proctor Brook. That makes complete sense. Thank you. Yep. Any further questions? Councilman again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to approve the transfer from account number 27000033021 in the amount of $124,922.03, Community Preservation Act Open Space, to account number 27001811-58562-2019-0380 and an amount of $124,922.03. Community Preservation Act, Independence Greenway, Phase 2, so moved. On the motion, any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Take a motion to adjourn. On the motion.